In this video, we're going to look at the WebGL image carousel elements from Elements Hive. So here we have an empty section. Let's go ahead and add the carousel element. So as you can see, when I have the mouse cursor on top of the carousel and start scrolling, it will move in the given direction. In terms of settings, under the content tab, we have the images and it's a property that supports dynamic data. Under the design tab, we have the layout section. And this is where we can define the global width of the carousel. We can define the alignment of the images. And we can define a gap between the images. The next setting that we have is the image section. And this is simply the width and height of the images. These are, of course, uh, support media queries. So you can define different sizes per breakpoint that you're using. The next section is the effects section. And this is where you would choose which WebGL effects you want to apply to your images. We have several different effects that all distort the images in different ways. So you can use it in different scenarios depending on what type of images that you're working with and the websites that you're building. The next setting that we have is duplicate images. And this is something that you should only use if you really need to. Um, in order to illustrate the scenario where you might want to use it is uh let's see i'm gonna keep just three images given this size i think it will show up so if you look at the right side of the carousel here you see that this image it just popped in the middle of the visible area of the carousel so in essence the infinity part of the carousel was kind of broken and this is probably something that you don't want to have. Uh, so the solution is essentially to add more images. Uh, if you are in a situation where you cannot add more images, then what you can do is just toggle this option. And what it would do is it would duplicate each of these images in the same order. And by doing so, it will get rid of the problem that we saw earlier. The next setting that we have is the disable on touch devices. And this is common to all the WebGL elements and extensions. It's an option that allows you to disable the element totally on the touch capable devices. So if you don't want to use the carousel in, let's say, tablets or mobile devices, then you would just enable this one. and the dependencies will not load and it will not be visible either. The last setting that we have is the spacing settings. And this is the standard uh, breakdown spacing that you know from other elements, which allows you to add a margin top bottom, uh, either by dragging the elements in the canvas directly or by defining the values here. And these are all the settings that we have. It's very easy to use and it allows you to add some pretty unique effects on your carousels. And uh, it would be a nice addition to any kind of portfolio sites or maybe in a product page or what have you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.